Yes, yes, crew, back once again with another video. Continuing our emu session, guys. Uh, it look, looked like it was well received last week, so big up to all the people that attended to that. I uh, just want to say thanks out to everyone. Um, gonna more likely look at some comments from that video, the most recent one. So let's have a quick look on there, guys, and uh, see what you guys are saying. Because uh, there were some really interesting comments uh, based. Oops. There were some really interesting comments based on the last uh, EMU, EMU video. Easy crew, easy crew. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, B. Right, so we go here. Let's get to there. Let's have a look quickly through some of these comments, guys. Big up to you. Uh, let's get rid of this quickly. I've kind of got things sort of set up here. Okay, so big up Daniel uh, Rodriguez. Uh, he says, in a crate sample, you can only sample the digital source if you have AES or ADAT available in as an expansion in the Emu Ultra. Big up to you for that idea, for that. Um, so I see what you're saying. So you basically need to have the, the extras. They're on the turbos, I think. I've seen them on the actual, um, on the back, right? Uh, analog is from the quarter inch input resampling is internal uh in my experience the compressor acts more like an overdrive distortion than a traditional compressor yeah i, I think i agree with you after messing with that one uh big up blah dnb uh says uh hi thanks for this video emu samplers were mostly used by tech step neuro funk producers like head rush optical kemal rob Data, Bad Company, Trace, Rhyme Time, Dom and Roland, alongside his legendary S760, Diesel Boy, Matrix Ultra, um, e E64 Ultra, Fotec, Dillinger, uh, E64 Classic. Wow, this guy's giving us some info here. Uh, Optiv, TB, uh, ESI32 and many others. So big up to that. Big up to Farburn. He says, you'll never get this sound with plugins. Uh, think about it. It's still the same modern components on your computer sound card. Uh, these old samplers use different components, even if they were digital. To keep it simple, some of so, some that are limited and no longer produced, the new SP twelve hundred um, had to find and source the last components so they could build these units. Uh, the algorithms. I think it's algorithm. Alver algorithms are yet to be fully emulated on these by uh, the by these. Oh, let me read. <laughs> what are you doing, B? <laughs> the algorithms aren't yet available to fully emulate these old samplers. Uh, these probably isn't much interest like there is with emulating the Mini Moog and other famous instruments. So ton of comments in there uh what else we got uh just something big up chris big up farben big up beetlejuice resample means you're sampling internally so yeah we we clarified that wicked oh yeah and also be Beetlejuice you said the 100 cents uh is per semitone which is kind of mad really uh busy don't you have an e64 ultra yes i used to have one back in the day uh sold it uh, when I got into my printing and then ended up seeing this lonely thing here and bought it back. But it's, to be honest, I was using the Ultra quite a lot. Not as fluent as my Akai, but proper, you know, got into it. I connect, had recycle, connected that up with it. Um, shout out to Ali Alex as well. Shout out to Audio Lego. Um, I had that with it um, and I uh, used to use that and also some of the filters on the bass lines and stuff. So I'm going to jog my memory. I'm going to get into that and over this series hopefully and uh we can mess about with the famous z plane filters so guys without further ado i just want to quickly show you guys something that i did so you remember we were printing all those samples in the last episode of this um uh, thing yeah um what i did and we got all the emu samples and um all the process bits and pieces that we did from them um and we we printed them we saved them in renoise for later use well then i created this with it so this is the best of both worlds uh you've got the emu processing resampled into renoise and i made this cool time stretch beat check it out
Bowl. All right, so we got that beat, yeah? So that's a wicked little drop beat. I'm going to use that in a production, more than likely. And uh, it's totally different. I've not got taken it from nowhere. I've done some processing. You've seen how we did that processing pre-prepped. We've messed about. We've had science in the lab. And then, boom, we've come with this uh, amen thing. So now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this and go back to where we were because... Um, I've gone through all the samples that we've had here. For some reason, the original sample's not in there no more. We've got that chiggity amen, which, to be honest, is mad. Um, we've got all the time stretches. Oh, what's this one? Nah, so we're going to have to take a new sample. So, lucky thing, we still got the original amen here. I believe the one that didn't want to play. Do you remember that? It was giving me bare grief. Uh, I think it's this one. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to resample that again. I'm going to, sorry, I have to go through all the sampling again, but, you know, this is just the way it goes. Uh, so let's go to new, empty sample, go new, and then let's hit the, uh, the, the headphones. Sh it should be coming through here, right? Uh, what have I done? What have I done? What have I done? No, it's going in there. Uh, three and four. Oh, come on, B. What's happening? Ah, it's on digital. Right, analog. Analog. Give me the analog back. Yeah, I heard saying. Analog. Yeah, yeah, we're back. Robot. Okay, so uh, turn down the volume on the sampler so we can hear what's going on. We got the analog 22K. Let's have a look at our Amen. <laughs> put it back to four seconds as I remember from yesterday so we're gonna go four right boom four seconds here we go no stop that stop that stop that I forgot to do the um, let me dispose of that I forgot to do the uh, threshold didn't I so turn the old threshold up oh crap look he's not got the Sorry, guys, I haven't even got the flipping screen on, man. Oh, but you know the deal. You know the deal. For those of you who missed that, that session there, you know, go back to the old video. B, right, there you go. Right, okay, so we're back. All right, guys, that's one thing, you know, I always forget to do that. All right, so let's hit arm and then do do the business. 24, minus 24 dB, that's where we were. Right, okay. All right, that went totally wrong. Let me try that again. Discard. <laughs> Long. Bow. Okay, that's done. Right, so now we're going to place it. Let me just make sure screens are good. Yep. All right, we're lovely. We're going to place that now. Truncating. It's probably not done a good job of truncating because I turned the mic on at the end and you'll probably see that in the sample when you go to edit it. So I'm going to go to, I'm moving too quick, and I go to the edit button. So sample, edit. We probably go to your tills. Let's see if we can rename that now. now. There is a way to rename these samples. I do remember tools. No, oh gosh. Uh, tools two. No. I would have thought it'd be on utils. It might be on manage. Let me go back to, ah, here you go, manage name. Right, so go back to here and go to amen, amen, M, E, N, right? And then I'm going to call it a ridge, O, R. And the way I'm changing these, um, these, uh, what do you call it, guys? The letters. I'm going using this keypad. If you look above the numbers here, you can see it's got um, just A, B, C and stuff. Now, I know that's basic stuff. I think nowadays in the 20th century, it's pretty much self-explanatory. Back in the day, needed tutorials for that. Um, uh, okay, so Amen Original, O, R, and you just keep pressing it until the letter changes to what you want. R, I, G. All right, you even get capitals, look at that. And you can buy like an ASCII keyboard, I believe, for this. Uh, just an old school one, and it will work. That's another comment that we got in the chat box. Uh, right, so Amen Ridge, going to go back to disk, yeah? 
going to go to there, Eamon, uh, go to banks. So we need to go back to, uh, go to click disk. And then we want to go to save. Uh, oh, we don't want, let's go edit sample. Hold on. Browse. Uh, exit that. Do you want to come through? Uh, let's go. Sa there you go. Save. Right. Save. No, I don't want to save the bank. I could save the bank. Let me just save the bank and done. So make life easier. Save the whole bank. Aim and session. I've got everything in there now. Job done. There. I'm pretty sure you can save individual samples on this if I remember lightly. But uh, I'm not going to go into that right now. All right. So now I've got me Aiman. I've got me Aiman original. Pla press uh, audition. Turn the volume back up. Right. You see all that crap at the end of it now? I've got to edit that out. So I've got edit, tools, uh, what we got? And uh, we want to go to, I think manage would be the one. Uh, utils. Hold on. Let me get my head around this. No, I'm pretty sure it's edit. Utils. Yeah, there you go. Utils. Truncate. And then we want to just get the end point. And then we just want to move the end point just before that FUD, that FUD starts and click OK. There we go. Right, Bosch. Now, you know what, guys? Now, did you hear that humming noise, right? There's a humming noise on the sample itself. Now, just for experimental purposes, I just want to make something clear. Um... We're more likely coming out of the analog desk and it's going back into the computer and then it's it's coming back out into uh it's going into the sample. Now you could use run an optical lead from your sound card into the back of the sampler if you wanted to sample that way. Uh that's one way to get rid of all the hu the humming and stuff, excuse me. Uh that's one way of getting rid of the humming and stuff. Uh another way to get rid of all that humming and all that palaver um is obviously to turn down the mixer here before I start sampling but just for experimental purposes I think that sounds whoa all right there's a tiny little blib on the end of that let me try and do do a bit more of that again now so utils uh, let's go truncate one more time and now this time you see that buzzing noise right is right on the end here that little tiny little blib right so I'm going to zoom that as well Zoom end. You guys would know about sample editing, you know, and stuff. It's the same principle as on the digital stuff. Can audition it from here now. Right, so that's clean now. Click OK. Right, now I want to zoom the start of this as well while I'm here because I don't necessarily trust that the start is a uh, thing. So I'm going to press F4. I just want to see if the start is good. Because to me, it looks like there's a bit of... The start point's a bit iffy. So let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, you want it nice and tight. And I usually do that, right? All right, so I'm going to keep it like that. Let me go back to um, preset now. And then let me go edit. And then I think we made a few Amen presets. No? Oh, we didn't. Okay. Ah, untitled preset. What's inside this one? So P000, let's edit that preset. And look, the Amen original is in there. So P000, go back to manage. Uh, let's name this preset. And we're going to call this preset as well, Amen original. So just uh, check the screens are good. Yep, A, M, same principle applies. So let's try and chop this Amen up inside this thing now. Because that's got to be the first thing before we get to the filters. Amen, space, original, yeah? O, no space here. O, R, I, G. So we've got the Amen original, right? So bang, put that in there like that. Okay, so that's gone in. So now we've got the Amen original. So we go to manage, right? And we got a first amen, which is on one. See the, the MIDI one, right? So we just move up arrow, and then that one's on two. It's already put it on two for us, which is pretty cool. So now all I've got to do now is uh, 
go back to my DAO and uh, get a MIDI instrument for my DAO. Let's create one from scratch just for, you know, tutorial purposes. And I'm on, I'm using Renoise. Uh, and I, all I'd have to do now from here is literally go to here um, and then go to uh, instrument, click on MIDI. And then on my um, MIDI interface, I've got my outputs. So I'll just go Fireface. I've got using the Fireface UCX, which is a brilliant uh, MIDI interface, guys, RME. I click on port, uh, sorry, port one, which is what I'm using. Uh, and then I can go to here, and as you can see, change, uh, sorry, change the MIDI channel to number two. And that should play somewhere along on our keyboard. All right, so we'll come back to that in a second. MIDI two, Amen or Ridge. Click edit, just see if it's in there. The sample is in there, the sample number five. Right, that should give us something. Right, so let's go here again. MIDI channel two, port one. Uh, let's see, why am I, oh yeah, of course I'm not, the reason why I'm not getting no MIDI signal is because I haven't switched on more devices. So I'm gonna have to switch on my Akai 950 because as we stated yesterday, MIDI goes through devices. So you can't access MIDI until all your devices are switched on. And I think it wants my Akai S3200 on. The only way around that, as we said yesterday, again, is to have a MIDI through box. I've got a really cool one here that I bought. It's from a company called, drumroll, uh, door MIDI and uh, you can get MIDI through box from them and it works awesome right so MIDI's flowing now so one of these should trigger what we want uh, okay emu's still not getting signal I've got to turn on the Akai flipping out I've got to turn on the whirl of equipment just to get this thing to work so I'm definitely while I'm doing these tutorials on the next tutorial I'm going to wire my emu um i think i'm going to wire it up to the through box because i've still got space left on my through box now i can't take you off take the camera off because it will take it'll be a long thing to show you but i'll definitely do that if you want to see all about that midi box and midi and up stuff and by the way as well while i'm here sorry guys um i wanted to get back to somebody about a comment yesterday that they mentioned on basic wiring he's got his laptop you know you are big up to you you've got your laptop right and you want to connect your emu to your laptop. So I can, I think I'll address that in another video in full detail if you want, but the basic structure of that is you need to buy an audio interface that contains MIDI. You need a MIDI cable out to MIDI in. Uh, if you're gonna use Renoise on your laptop, then you, you're good to go. You can use the keyboard uh, and there's some a little bit of setup in there. But if you wanna see that, that's the general gist of it. I can do a video about setting up MIDI stuff outboard or we can do a QA and a live so let me know in the chat box down below all right all right so there is there i'm triggering the keyboard now now let me just turn you around here you might be able to see what i'm doing there uh can you see the keyboard there so i'm triggering the keyboard but as you notice it's way up on this side of the keyboard now i could probably just take my keyboard up an octave or I think I'm gonna make the original key, let me see if that works, over here where it says Orridge, I think I'm gonna try and make that C3. Now I believe if I strike the keyboard, there you go, it automatically does it for me. So I can just change that there, and now instead of playing it all the way up the keyboard, all the way up here, I'm now playing it in the middle. So that's like middle C, which is way good now, right? So we've set that up now. You've got that all set there, guys. All looking good. Um, the next stage is now is to get this to work on the DAO in time, in sequence. So now what we need to do now is we need to time this up now. This is the fun bit, guys. This is where it used to take time, you, you know, to get something tight. We sport now in the 20th century, but back in the day, tightening up this sort of stuff here man your start point it's the same principle but your start point's got to be spot on um time stretch was is not your friend in these days eh? you put your key in you put your metronome on and you tighten him up and you make sure he's tight and it's like dj mixing so let me just 
put this to one bar, one loop or whatever. So I would say on the actual uh, renoise now, I've now got to um, put this to say, uh, the block to say 20, which is even number. All right, so now if you notice, listening to it, Comment down below, is it too fast or too slow? Tell me. All right, here we go. Right, so now, what I've got to do now is I have to change the pitch of the sample um, until it mixes. By do changing this, the course tune, and the fine tune, like so. But I'll give you a heads up on this, right? The best way to do it, in my opinion, to get it tight, right, is to start real slow. So instead of going at C2, right, trigger your sample at C1, right, and then go real slow. And then let's give that a go. Right. Bloody hell, man. All right, we're getting close now. All right, as you can hear now, listen. It sort of stutters over. So you know it's got to go quicker. Now it's running away, so it's going too fast. So now we need fine tune. Move it over there, fine tune here. My days. Right, you know what I'd say? Ooh. Right, you know what? You know what? Okay, so let's go, but let's do let's do this, right? So we're gonna go into here, aim an original. Now, I think right, we should uh copy it. Can we copy the sample? Yes. So we're gonna copy the sample to aim an original and let's just call it back up, yeah, because I want to try something. B A K because to me it sounds like the start point's just no good. Right? So we not working on the backup, we're gonna work on the original, right? Cause it to me it sounds what I call spongy. And spongy is like when the sample itself is um not quite bang on the start. So I've gone to the cut section, yeah, just to re 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 reiterate that. You go to the manage, you go util oh I've done it again. You go to edit, you go utils, you go cut, right? Simple as that, right? Zoom start and go all the way in on the start now. Now that start, maybe it's a tiny bit. Keep, just zoom, zoom right in though, guys. Zoom all the way in. Right, let's see what we got here. And feel it. That's bang on the start now, right? So let's see what it feels like on the keyboard. Oh, shoot. That feels spongy though on a keyboard, man. Whoa. I'm gonna do the cut. No, I'm gonna do the cut. You know what, I'm gonna go in there and do the actual cut because I'm not confident that it's giving me the, the start point how I want it on here. So I'm just gonna do the cut now. Let me go to edit, uh, cut. Okay, click okay. You got you got magnification on this thing as well, man. It's kind of nuts. No, you see what the hell just happened there. See, that's not cool. Right, hold on. Manage utils. Now nah, utils. Edit. <laughs> you know this is a five-minute thing on a, on a DAO. But you know what? Once you figure it out. Right, you're good to go. I thought it crashed there. I was like, hey. Oi. Right. Click OK. Let's make sure. OK, OK. I know what I'm doing wrong. Cut is not what I want. It's truncate. It's still truncate. OK, so cut is just cutting out that little bit. At least I think so. What the hell was that? I don't even know what taper is, man. Right, let's try that, let's try that. So I'm bang there, I'm gonna click okay, 
trim that up. There we go. Truncate. Right, let's see what that sounds like now on the on the thing. I think that's better. Right. All right, we're getting there. Right, that's sounding pretty tight. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the tempo up. Sorry, stop. What we're going to do now is we're going to take the tone up 12. So we're going to take it up an octave. Now, you could either do this easily by probably just hitting the... Let's try hitting the C3 again. That's a C2. C3. Let's see if that makes any difference. And then move this off. If not, I'll just take the I'll take it up 12. Right, yeah, yeah. I, I could go down. Let me go to let me go to the other one. Let's go to C1 then. C1. So C2, C3, listen. So like C. But on my keyboard, it's weird. It's saying C1 is that one, but when really in my, my head it's not. Alright, so don't worry. Alright, so boom. There you go. Right, so now it's in time. So all we done, we timed it up nice. Right, so let me have a little play around with it now and see what's happening. Right, let's tweak it up a bit more. I'm going to turn off the metronome now so we can just mess with the fine tune. I think it's a tad quick. And then days there, people are sitting there stone, just listening to that, just tweaking it. All right, let me open up the loop a bit now and see what's happening. Pretty much sounds quite good, mate. All right, so now we need to start. Let's give this a quick save, right? I'm going to go to disk. I'm going to go save. Amen session. We're making progress. So we've looped up our first beat. We've got it in time. Uh, we've Now we're going to chop a snare out of it, right? So let's get the snare chopped in here. Yeah, we want to call the bank, aim and session, save it down to my iAmiga zip drive. Um, just finished an HXC. My uh, experiment in putting that in, in uh, the disk slot over here S and then get the settings because I've got quite a few people asking for uh, the HXCs for the emu and I haven't got around to configuring it yet, but I reckon that would sit nice color. Everything sits straight in there and... Let's give that a go. But probably I would rec I would personally I would recommend flipping getting an old jazz drive off with some discs and that or if you can't get hold of them, SCSI to SD. Right, so let's get into chopping up the Amen. Right, so now we've got Amen Original, right? Now we've got Amen Original back. Remember we copied the sample earlier. So we might as well edit this one now because We've already, uh, you know, we've we've got we've we've got it how we want it. We're happy with it. Dogs kicking off in the background. We're gonna hit edit sample. I'm gonna go to your tools. Now here's where it's gonna get interesting. Now, call this one as slow as anything. Right. Okay. G 
Jeez. All right, we don't want to get into the filters yet. How do we get into there? We're back in the preset. I didn't impress preset. Right, aim and original. So we're going to go here. We're going to go there. We're going to go. Now, I would have thought this is truncate. Right, let's do a truncate on it just to keep life simple. We know it works. So now I'm going to find the start point of the snare. Zoom in a bit. Right, so I've zoomed in there, right? Right, so click OK. Bang. Copy that. Truncate in. Yeah, so we're going to call that. Let's rename it now. Sample manage uh, name. Amen, a ridge, and then go to here, and then just call it SN1 for snare. SN1, because there's a few snares on this, right? And then we'll trun truncate it as we go along. So we got that now. Now we've got to go back to the preset. We've got to edit the preset, and edit the preset. <laughs> this, this is the difference between the ultras and the standards. The ultras were way faster. The standards were like a bit laggy in that. So you're using them and they're kind of just like, uh, what do you want to do? Right, so let's have a look here. So go back to here. Cool, blimey, mate. Edit. Exit. Yeah, there you go. Right, so okay. So we go here. So we got Amen Original on the first key. I believe if we go along here, it gives us an option to have a high key and a low key, yeah? So when it's low key, it don't mean, yeah, let's keep it low key, yeah, look, tell me what I want. Low key means the low key, the lowest key you want the sample on. The high key is the highest key you want the sample on. So in theory, you only want the amen on one note, the foot drum amen, which is our middle C. Because you're not going to be playing it up here. Or here. Well, you might. But in our in the drum section we're making, we're just having it on the C3. So now we need to put our high key to C, the C that we're putting it on, which is on here. Apparently, it's a C2, but I don't know. You know what? To make life easier, C2. Right, which is that one, or even, sorry, my bad, C1, right? Right, personally, you know what, this is driving me mad. Let me just bring my keyboard down an octave. Or up an octave. Jeez. There you go. Yeah, so, so C1. All right, so that's C1. So... Low key is C1, high key is also C1. So you notice here, if I wanted that to be go up to the sharp key or even have a little octave of it to do messing about, I would just, I can have it a whole, a whole octave on the foot drum if I wanted. So you could be like, and play it up and down the key. So what we can do here, what we can do, let's plan for the future, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna cut that one off at C3, sh a C1 sharp, but then the low key now, Let's take it right down to the minus, C0. So that way, we can play the Amen. And we could use that for later on when we're doing chopping. Like, you know, I'll give you an example of that in a minute. So the high key, sorry, not C sharp. What am I doing? It's going to be, the high key is going to be uh, C3, C1. So C1 to C0. So we've got a whole octave of Amen kick drum to do little things like... You know what I mean. All right, so uh, he's done it again. Right, okay. It's pretty cool, though. So, right, so we got that set. Next, we're going to uh, make our Amen uh, the snare. We're going to bring in the snare. So what we want to do now is we want to go to Edit New, I believe, right? And then it adds another voice. 
yeah now we're talking so we click next next and then what you want to do is you want to go to your aim and snare you see that there now and then your snare low key c sh uh the c sharp and then high key c sharp so that way it's, for now it's just assigned to one key but we can we can mess about with that later now as you can see it's playing way slow so we got to set our original key to the key that we want to play on so now we got that bosh now we got Right, so I don't know if anyone's noticed anything about this. It's actually playing at two different tempos. And the reason for that is because we have to, right, we have to uh, go like so and change the pitch settings so it matches. Otherwise, it's going to sound a bit untidy for now. So now we've got the amen sounding better. All right, so good. So remember, this is velocity sensitive as well. So how hard you hit it, obviously, don't start whacking it with your hammer. But if you're using like your dowel and stuff later on, you can always take the velocity um, velocity off. So we're going to play it now and uh, do a bit bit more programming on Amen with the snare now. So we go to there and do a little bit of programming with that. Right, immediately I can hear that there's something going on with this snare. So now I've got to go back into it now. And I've got to edit the sample. There's a little edit sample tab here, as you can see. Oh, oh no, you can't see because I haven't put that on. So I've got to be careful with this. because get right. Oh, that's why I keep double checking. Right, so you've got your little edit sample tab here. Uh, F -A -F 6 I hit that. Now let's go back to see what's going on with this. So apparently it's not clean. So let's go back to our truncate and let's see what's going on here. So zoom the start. Yeah, look, it's got a bit of fud at the start there. It's pretty hard to tell, to be honest. Uh, but look, zoom start, zoom out. And uh, we got to just edit this sample start point, see what's happening. And like, if you're unsure, just keep moving forward until you, you hear it chop off a piece of the snare and then let it come back on itself. That button could do a service, I think. Probably could use this. I'll use a keyboard instead. Right, now, I don't know if it's going to keep the start point where it is, right? And there's probably another menu where I can do this more efficiently. But for now, I'm just going to ch chop it. I shouldn't have really just gone straight in and chopped that, but ch let's do it. Right, it looks like I might have chopped off a, <laughs> a little bit too much, mate. A little bit too much. Is there an undo on that? Let me see. Right, I want to see if I can do this on the fly. There's got to be a way to do this on the fly. Right, so let me see. Can I do it on the fly? Well, that's not going to help me on the fly. I know that you can do it on the fly on the Akai S5000. So there's a, there's a, a one point so far possibly to the Akai S5000. So when I go to here, I do that, yeah, and I do edit sample. No, it doesn't let you. There's utils, no. Right, let's have a look at this cut, man. Cut section, no, we don't want to cut. Yeah, but the start and end. It's got to be a start point thing here, man. Copy, paste, truncate. What the hell's taper? No, don't mess with that. 
Uh, do do Right, okay, let's get this show on the road, man. Cut section. Now I'm scared of that cut, man. <laughs> now you know, what? keep it on truncate. Truncate is the one. Maybe Emu likes a truncate. It's a truncate ting. It's a truncate ting. Truncate ting. Zoom start. Keep going. Yeah, it might have chopped off a little piece too much there. Right, try that. Let me just see. Jeez. I wonder if that's doing that. Come on. Let me just get let me just get into hyper mode now, man. Let me get into hyper mode and see what's going on. That looks about right. Boy. I'll tell you what, when Recycle came in, into play, it was a godsend, you know. I'm not even joking, because, boy. Tools were limited in these days. Let me actually do the truncate and see if that helps. Man, sweating here, you know, to cut off an amen. <laughs> Don't erase it. What's wrong with you? Right. Uh, sheesh, sheesh. Sheesh kebab, mate. Sheesh kebab. Truncate. Char, just truncate it again. I'm just going to, I'm just going to just have to improvise here because this is just nuts. What kind of snare is that? I've chopped too much of it. I'll come back a bit. Chop B, man. Come on, man. Fix up. What's happening? Right. Edit. Just take that, start, that start point back a bit. You can sort of see it's chopped a piece of it off. I reckon it's that, that, little, that little smidge. I reckon it's that little smidge. Right. Come on. It's not easy, you know, but if you've got Recycle connected to this, it's, it's a doddle to chop samples up. I can tell you that now firsthand. Right, okay, undo it again. That, to me, might be an improvement. Oh, shoot. Will it let me undo? What? It's let me undo, you know. That's kind of cheeky. It's kind of flamming. Right, let me just do that in a minute. Hold on. Chop it more. Chop him up. Chop him up. Chop him up. High speed chop mode. High speed chop mode. It's not bad. It's not bad. Not bad, not bad, not bad. For the sake of perfection, you know what I mean? You've got to go through, you've got to tweak it as much as you can. I'm not going to sit here wasting a whole tutorial tweaking it, but this is the process, yeah? Right, now let me get the little shivery bit. Edit. Still sounds a bit shoddy, but cha, it will do. 
Right, copy. Uh, let's copy that sample again. Let's go to here. We're going to call that Amen uh, Hat. You can shorten these samples down at the end of it as well. As well to um, save on memory if you want this space because it's very precious on these old machines. I'm going to truncate that down again. That's nice, that's nice. Back in here again. Now, I think there might be on the preset, there might actually be um, a voice copy command. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> right. Copy. Yeah, so let's just do copy. Copy's your easiest one. Oh, my days. Source preset. Source voice. <laughs> what is it doing? Cop All right, cancel that, cancel that. Right, we're going to do that. Yeah, so source voice, amen, original snare. Right, so let's just get that right. So utils, copy, freaking jeez, man. Uh, amen, original, yeah, yeah. And then data preset. What the hell is a data preset? Let me see, I'm messing around with this. <laughs> Empty preset. No, no, no. Copy voice to... Keep it the same. How strange. Voice 2. Source voice. Yay. It did it. Did it? Yeah, it done it. It done it. Okay, cool. Cool. Uh, excuse the clip there. All right, so next, I'm going to put that other sample in here. Phew. And do the keys. Don't forget the keys. You've got to do the keys now. So this key. We want that. So C3, we want that one to be a D. And then we're going to move over here. And then we're going to make them all Ds. D. D there. What's going on here? Oh, got to do the high key first. Okay, D. Strange. D. There you go. Right, so we got our D sorted out. So we got. Oh, yeah, because it copied it, innit? So we want the original hat. So as you can see, is it didn't actually trunk the truncate doesn't happen until you until you truncate it. That's a bit dreadful. So we go to here, we go truncate, utils, truncate. It remembers where though. Now another thing on the Akai, comment down below, you guys must be using your emus regular. Is there a page where I can just edit this um start point and Check it out before I commit to it. Right, so click OK. Right. Now, by this time, when I got my EMU E64 Ultra, Ultra we were done already in Renoids already. So, a uh, re recycle. So, there w we didn't need to do too much of this hardcore, driving your mad kind of editing. Yeah, so bear that in mind. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm doing uh, giving you my best shot here. Right, so we got that nice little snare there. Uh, snare hi-hat, yeah. So now... Uh, original key. So the original key's got to be the same as uh, here. D, yeah, original key's D. So why is the tune... I think it's probably something to do with this, hold on. Yeah, 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 okay, we're good. Right, I'm going to slow the sample down a bit, try and compensate for that. That sounds a bit better to me.
Right, let's speed up the process a bit. So you get the drift of creating that. Let's just get let's just go straight ahead now. Uh, nick another snare and then a cymbal and then uh, we start messing about with the filters because we are kind of running a bit over time here now on this on this tutorial due to the the arm wrestle with the chopping yeah uh, so let's go to amen original hat and then let's just call it uh, two bang get that one let's do a little edit on that Gonna truncate it as we did before. Why would you want to erase that? Okay. So, yeah, truncate. Okay. Truncate that. That's sounding good. Same procedure again. Let's go into there. Uh, utils copy. I wonder what that split is. No, nah, no, nah, that's probably like multi key groups on one. Keep it the same. Just click OK. Should just go straight in. And then change this here to two. And then we need another key. We need so we've got D. We've got D sharp now. We go to here. We go to D sharp. High key first. It doesn't like not pressing the high key. Back to here, Bosh. We 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 we're on a race now. We're on a race, right? All right, let's go straight in. No, it's not messing about. Let's get the snare in there now. One time. Yes, mate. Yes, copy, copy, copy. We are starting to sound okay. It's a bit spongy, but it sounds good. You know what I mean? Once the tune's up and running and it's sounding and it's rolling tight, you're not even going to think about it. It's just, it's one of them things where you're in, you know, you know about that little dot in the middle, man. You know what I mean? And that people can't normally tell. But, you know, anyway, you, you, you get the drift. Right, so... We're going to go into Utils again. No, we're going to go into Edit again. Utils, Truncate. Look at that, man. This is this is what we had to do when, when the Akai first come out. Yeah? These are the Akai days. By the time the Emu, people were just chopping it up and recycle real quick. Right, so next move, sne uh, Symbol. Right, there's another. You see how I'm just going to keep that symbol, that snare at the end there, yeah? Because I kind of like it. Let's zoom the start. Just keep it tight. Look, I've, I've, I've butchered that symbol there. You can see it. Right, so. Right, so zoomed in nice. You see him? Yeah, click OK. Boom. Back up. Number three. Might as well rename it. Uh, s uh, it could call that symbol, but you know what? Now. Nah. That's going to get too complicated if I do that because I've got other parts to extract from that. I've still got another snare to extract from that. So go to here, go to utils, go to copy, go to again, boom, uh, S9. Right, there we go, S9. Uh, then we go to here. Uh, just have to check, make sure it's recording. <laughs> uh, right, next thing, let's go to, we've got, we've done D sharp. So we're going to do uh, CDE now. So we've got E, uh, high key first. Jeez. High key first, low key second. Over to here, or ridge key. Go back, uh, previous menu. Uh, ridge key, which is uh, E. There we go. Look, we've got a symbol set up now. And see what we got. Right, so one time, before I do that now, I'm gonna just copy the symbol. Let me just let me just copy the symbol real quick, right? Because what I want to do now is I want to just this is the last snare. So amen. So let's call that uh, SN3, I think, or or just put LS for last snare. So because we want that in order. So let's go to here. Start deleting out now. Just uh, uh, down key to delete. By the way, guys, I didn't mention that. So just call that L. S, last snare. 
So we've got last now. I just put a three on the end of it as well. Because the reason why I do that, because I want to edit the actual symbol. Um, and let's get, get into that. We'll put, before we do that, let's just get, let's just edit it. Because my memory is just going to forget what this is. Uh, then we go back to truncate, right? We're going to explore more features. Go sh straight to the beginning of that last snare. That's an important snare too, right? So let's do that. So we zoom in, zoom the start again, get into there. Let's do that. And so we've got that chop now. So that's the chop. That's the last chop, right? So that's our LS3. We've, tr we've truncated that. And now we want to get the symbol. But what I want to do with the symbol, I'm going to leave that little, right? Leave that there. Because I, it will give it might give it a little groove when we start messing about with it, right? So what I'm going to do, leave that on there, Rago. I'm going to copy that one as well, and I'm going to go to there, and I'm going to call this one Sim. So oh, I shouldn't have deleted Amen, but there you go. So this is the Amen. A M E N C Y M C Y M. I think we've gone overtime here now. Right, last truncate. We're going to get that set up now. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So now go to there. It's definitely getting into this now. Uh, we don't want to. No, we want to truncate it again. Now we're getting into the into the flow. Into the flow. Right. So go there. Boom. Uh, truncate. Yeah. Let's see. Let's give that a little. Right. So now get the end point. Bring the end point right back. And now we just got just the symbol. Right, stops a bit short. Let's zoom, let's zoom the end. Zoom the end and see what we got there. Yeah, just a tiny little smidge, smidgy. Right, check it now. So now we got the zoom end, right? We got the amen symbol. But look, let's start. Let's have a look and see if we can find a loop function on here now to give this a, like a nice uh, authentic. Yeah, so we've got loop type. We've got loop type. We've got on, off. Um, don't know what that's all about. You all right, pal? We've got that. Uh, see what it's all about. Looping release would be when you press the button to release your loop. Uh, let's see. Truncate. Uh, loop. Digitune. Right. Click on loop. Let's go to loop straight away. We can set our end, a loop and uh, a, end, a start and end point of the loops, right? So you see how that's just looping there. So we want to bring our start point forward. Bring the loop size. What the hell is this? This is funny. Uh, zoom out. Zoom. What kind of nonsense is that? What kind of loop looping is this? Bro. I just want to do a standard loop. Right, so the start point is at 0.2, fine. The end point needs to come in. What? A smaller loop? Ah, get rid of that fixed size. See you later. Damn, what kind of stupidness is that? Bring the start point forward, make sure you can see that, guys. Now, check this out, look, watch. Gnarly, right, but let's go, let, let's not just waste um, part of the sample. Let's just bring it right back to the end there and see what we got. <laughs> Bit quicker. So we want to bring that start loop start. Yeah. Watch, th watch this. Some mad tricks. That's quite nice. I did like the first one though, but it still sounds good there. Bit more. Give it a little play and then, you know, imagine in, 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 in you messing about with it in the tune. I kind of like the first one, but you know what? You could just do this on this one, right? And you could. You, you've got an auto calculate as well. I don't know what that would do. Let's go on. Let's just press that just for the love of it. Look. Oh, it makes it a bit smoother. All right. So we click OK. We've got that per, uh, looped. Compress, you know. You can compress it as well. We ain't going to mess about with that just yet. We'll come back to that. Compress with the B line, stuff like that. Yeah, we're gonna mess about X fade and all that. Don't worry about all that. Let we, you you guys experiment with that in your own. Right. So we got nice smooth amen symbol. That's all looped up. Is is uh, all set into there now, guys. This is looking good, man. This is looking good. So we got two more pieces to add to this, and then and then we are ready. 
So we click there, we click copy, uh, just click OK. And we have got the, uh, oh, wait a minute. What's the last thing we had on E1? <coughs> oh, yeah, it's another thing as well. This is another cool thing about analog um, samplers. When you double up the sound on these, when you double up the key groups, they give you this different kind of flange, which is unique to the sound processors of this sampler. And uh, as you can hear there now, <coughs> it's giving me that flange, look. It's like really flangy. The sample placed together is a like a slight phase to it. And uh, it's really, really uh, cool. Right, anyway. So now, what I wanted to do... Hold on. Yeah. So... No, no, no. Tell you what. No, no. I'm thinking about the end snare. But I'm going to use that and I'm going to put that on a few keys so we can mess about with that. Right, so we got the symbol. Right, but we don't want the symbol. We want the one before that, I think. Right, so let's just get this uh, sorted. We'll put the, the original key, C, D, E. Then we got, it's got to be the F. This one's got to be on F. And then over here, we're going to change this. C, D, E, high key F. High key F, C, D, E, F. High key F, C, D, E, F. Low key F. Yeah, and then right. You know what I'm gonna do? Okay, cool, cool. We know that works. There was one more snail on its own, wasn't there? All right, let me just do one more copy here now. Let me see what I've got. I'm uh, going to experiment with that a little bit more. Copy that one. And when you copy, it keeps all of the parameters the same as the previous one, apart from a few things, right? So we got oh, we got the three. So hold on. So this is Amen 3, 2, 3. Amen hat 3. I think we've already got this one. Hold on. Yeah, we've already got that one there twice from the looks of it. Three. Two, amen. Original hat two, three. Yeah, those last two are not quite. It should be three, and then it should be LS. All right, see what that is. All right, that's two samples playing on the same key. So we got E F C D E F one. Uh, F sharp, F sharp, T D E F, F sharp. That's a single snare on its own. And then let's go back to here, and then we better save this sampler. Right, so we got that now. Now, what I want to do with this now, right, is I want to span this one across a few keys so we can do stuff with it. So that one finishes on F1, C, D, F, C, D, E, F, F sharp, right? But the high key, let's make it like flipping there, right? Whatever, C2, right? So we can do some like, but let's just, let's bring it, uh, pitch it down a bit. Yeah, I might, you know what I might do? I might make the original key up. It sounds a bit dry up. Uh, so. Yeah. So we do something like that. Let me see. All right, we've got two of the same key there, so we can change that. Hold on. Yeah, there's going to be some choppage running here now. Now, last but not least, let me just copy that symbol. 
right? Hopefully this pulls off all right. So in fact, look, no, let me just copy this one. Uh, utils, copy, we're almost there guys. We're, we're almost there, but this is what it takes, man. You save it, once you've got it, you've got it, you know what I mean? You've got your aiming sort of ready to go. Um, so let's let's just have a nice little symbol now. Bring up my keyboard a bit. <coughs> right, so that's all the way up there. And now let's put a symbol. I want to put symbol. Right, symbol. That's a symbol loop. And I want to do. Whew, I want to do the height. The the low key. Bloody hell! This is crazy. Right. Right, so we want to do the low key. I'm going to put it here on C sharp. And the high key on the next C sharp. I'm just going wild here. Right, now let me just, um, let me just pitch it down a bit. You get the drift, right? So let's give that a quick save now before we start faffing about with the filters and all that. Guys, I really think we ran over time now on this one. We're going to have to just hit this one on another session. I'm going to save this one up, guys. I think that's all we got time for on the next session. We're definitely going to deep dive onto the Z-plane filters and drop a B-line and program some beats on this thing. We've chopped up our aiming. We've got it ready to go. And now it's just time for the tear out, rinse out, selection, ting a ling and ting So, guys, with, um, without further ado, take care. God bless. Peace.